So we're back with another Hump Day Real Estate with Ken Dallin and DMV. And today, who's our special guest we got? We got Daniel Mack here, NFL, Lim NFL Lending. I'm happy to be here, brother. Hey, we appreciate you for coming out. Hey, Daniel, look, one of the things that uh, I hear a couple people have been talking about lately uh, since the interest rates are high, folks have been talking about arms coming back. What, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, right now, arms are sitting at maybe like a quarter of a percent lower than uh, the floor rate right right now on a fixed rate 30 year or, or, you know, 20 or 15 years. So, I mean, the rates, give or take, probably around like 6.75, um, which, like I said, again, is like a quarter of a percent lower than fixed rate 30 year mortgage. So um, if your play is to buy and get out within, let's just say, five to seven years, where you're holding the property and you're just trying to, uh, for whatever reason, trying to get a lower rate or trying to uh, get a lower payment, then you can go for an arm. But again, keep in mind that you won't be able to couple that with any type of uh, down payment assistance program or anything like that. So this is more for a unique set of clients who are literally going to buy the house for a couple of years, you know, take an arm product just to get a lower payment and then wind up either selling that house or uh, refinancing the house to try to get an overall lower payment overall. So that's my general take on it. You know, of course, you want to look at qualifying for those type of programs, which will require a little bit of a higher um, credit report or credit score. Typically, a 640 doesn't really get you the best uh, arm product. You want to start in around a 680 credit score. Um, so that you don't be paying an arm and a leg literally for an arm product. So it's a couple of things that go into the algorithm. But um, if that's something for your specific uh, situation, then we can look at it and see what we can do to kind of help you out there to get a lower payment for a couple of years. Appreciate all of that. And for folks uh, who don't know, an arm is adjustable rate mortgage. Um, one of the the, the questions uh, that I have with the arm um, and are they, well, let's let's start with this question. The APR, annual percentage rate. Are we expecting, and though for those who don't know, annual percentage rate include origination uh, fees, uh, uh, broker fees, et cetera. Uh, are we expecting for uh, an APR on an arm maybe to be higher than any of the other uh, loan products? Um, not typically. I wouldn't say it's higher. Um, the algorithm is, is typically the same as a 30 year fixed. Um, whatever those fees that are occurred during the process of your loan and your financing, then that will contribute to your APOR. But um, typically, we're not seeing a lot of additional fees when it comes to um, getting an arm product versus a 30 year or 15 year fixed loan. Gotcha, gotcha. And so in a nutshell, right now, you say the arm is not really the, the best option like it so say was in 2006, 2007, um, because the interest yeah. rates are coming coming kind of, you know, cut competitive. Yeah, the floor rate. I mean, the floor rate in the index is, is pretty much almost um, identical right now because the regular fixed rates are so high or inflated. I want to say so high because rates used to be higher than this. We, you know, we've seen rates at 14%, 18%. Um, so 7% or 8% right now, it's just a little bit more inflated than what we saw, you know, a couple of years ago with uh, four or 5% or even 3% for some of us who, you know, refinanced on a refi boom. But for the most part, those rates are pretty much uh, right around the same area right now because of the margins and the index. So unless you have a unique situation, again, where you're trying to move um, out of that property within three years or five years, once that adjustable rate uh, mortgage adjusts, um, depending on where the market is, you could see a substantial increase in your payment um, if you don't get out of that vehicle in time when it starts to adjust. And right now, we don't know what the adjustment will be as far as the percentage, but a 5-1, as an example, will adjust one time um, after that five-year fixed period. So if you're locked in for, you know, let's just say six, seven, five for five years, if the rates climb to 9% or 10%, it can adjust in one year. It can adjust from that six, seven, five all the way up to that 10%. 
which can throw your whole numbers off. It could throw you into a higher payment situation. And if you're not prepared for that, then you, you, you have to obviously try to refinance or sell that property before um, it adjusts because you just don't know. So some, some uncertainty there. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, man, I'm, it's hot outside and I think I need to buy a house, but I, mean, I don't know. The interest rates are too high, man. What, what, what did you What did you tell me about the market? What's What's your take on the on the market? And yeah, um, right now, just like I tell all my clients um, that are closing and potential clients who are getting financed and approved, um, you buy the house that you can afford. Um, a lot of times, we have a lot of people out here, and I don't want to name names, but. You know, we're out here trying to showcase and we're trying to keep up with the Joneses and we're trying to, uh, you know, so oh, th this other person has a mansion, so I need a mansion. It's not about that right now in today's economy. and Inflation is so high. You want to buy the house that you can afford. Um, and when the time is right, you know, kind of sell that house or refinance it to a lower rate or you can actually uh, vacate the house. Uh, make some money from the equity that you've uh, stored up over the years and go ahead and buy your dream house at that point. And so that's going to be my uh, uh, number one recommendation. Like, hey, you don't have to buy your dream house right now. You can buy somewhere to lay your head, you know, get into a decent school for your kids, you know, back and forth to work. A lot of people are working from home. Just get that house that you can afford right now with today's market rates. And then when the time is right, because we know there's a wave that's always coming, you know, the rates will go down. You'll be able to sell that house for top dollar. You'll be able to walk away with a ton of money and you'll be able to go ahead and upgrade to the next house. So that's what I'm telling my clients. Don't just shoot for the most expensive house right now because that comes with the most expensive payment. Yep, yep, yep. And man, I... But I knew, I want down payment assistance and all of that stuff. Is that <laughs> I know it's doable. Yeah. But how do you feel about the down payment assistance, the expense for down payment assistance and all of that stuff? Yeah. So with uh, down payment assistance, again, um, depending on what you can qualify for, um, I have some couple of assistants walking around. Depending on what you can qualify for and what your credit scores are. Um, you know, it's not typically just money that's handed out. You have to qualify for this money. Um, you know, with the city of Baltimore and where we're at in the state of Maryland, um, they have several different programs out here where you can qualify for a ton of money. In fact, a couple of weeks ago, we had one client who qualified for about uh, $80,000 in, in grants, which significantly lowered her loan amount. So it took her payment down by, you know, almost four to five hundred dollars because she was able to qualify for so much money. Now, that's not a typical situation, but you have certain neighborhoods and certain programs where you can kind of couple and stack those programs together and you can try to benefit from as much money as possible. And I would say over the last 10 clients that I've closed over the last couple of months, I would say about half of those came to the table with zero dollars. And so that was because we were able to stack grants, stack down payment assistance program. You know, after you pay your earnest money deposit, which opens up escrow, um, at that point, all of the rest of the credits come into the file. Your down payment assistance, your grant programs, everything comes into the file. We even have clients who have, you know, live near your work programs where your work will literally contribute another $5,000 towards you purchasing that house. And so you don't necessarily walk away with that extra money, but it goes to uh, support the principal reduction on your loan amount. And I'm not trying to be too technical, but when you buy a house, whatever your loan amount is, you can't get any money back from down payment assistance. But if we have another 10,000 left over or 20,000 left over, we will put that into your principal to, to lower or reduce your loan amount, and which in turn is gonna lower the payment. So in other words, for for the for the people in the back of the room, if it, if the loan amount was a hundred thousand and you had additional twenty thousand left over, that would reduce your your, your principal balance by eighty thousand. Right. That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. We print there. It'll go down to eighty thousand. So, and now again, that's going to allow you to uh, lower your monthly payment, and make it more affordable for you. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, I hear you sell that, but. Now there's 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 talk out there about this, and, and this probably won't uh, affect that borrower who got all of that 
grant money because a lot of that grant money is also going to pay for closing costs, correct? That's correct. Um, yep. So mm -hmm. the, the the person I'm talking, uh, maybe talking for right now or speaking for is um, the person who is looking at the difference and who might have to pay their own closing costs, although they get the down payment assistance. How do you feel yep. about that with, with, with the some of the products out there? Because I know uh, you know, there might be origination fees, et cetera, on some products. That... Yeah. So are you are basically for those who don't um want to use a grant, you say them basically well, they have their own no, their own money. No, no, no. They 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 want to use the grant, but then maybe that grant uh it, actually the clothing cost is higher. So let's say like uh, there's a like let's just use the pick on the Chinoa right now. If you do the mm -hmm. Chinoa program. Nine times out of ten, the closing costs is probably going to be six point seven percent, somewhere around that ballpark. Okay. Just yep. for using using that product. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm, so, I'm speaking from that 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 buyer. Yeah, so you know, if you have a grant or down payment assistance program, that's going to cover your down payment versus covering your closing costs. Um, then you have other ways to kind of get money into the file, which would be through. Um, potentially getting a seller's contribution, um, going down that road, a lot of times a seller can assist you with giving you some additional money towards your cash to close. Um, you can also use um, a gift of funds from a family member, um, a family member who may have, you know, extra five, 10 grand laying around. Um, if you're short, you can actually use and get a gift letter and, and use some of that money, send it directly to title so they'll give us a credit towards your closing costs. So that kind of offsets you having to bring that additional money. Um, or a lot of times, if, you know, a lot of people, a lot of clients have a retirement account and you can use money from your retirement account as well to um, assist in paying for your closing costs. So between those general traditional ways of funding the deal, I mean, you should be able to get 2000 2000 2000 from each one of those avenues, and that should be able to go in and cover your closing costs as well. Um, we also talk about a little bit about, um, you know, possible having a realtor step in and pay for, you know, let's just say a $500 towards your closing costs if they desire to do that, or a lender coming in saying, hey, you know, because of whatever happened, you're short $500, we can give you a lender credit as well. So these are all ways that we can get money into your file so that you can get the closing safe and sound as smoothly as possible. So there's a ton of ways to really get money into that file for closing costs. Now, uh, so you, you spoke about the the, the lender credits. Are, are those programs, uh, you know, still around where if a person does have their own down payment, maybe you know they, they, they can get a higher amount of lender credits to actually offset some of that closing costs? Yeah, so right now, because um, the rates are a little bit um, inflated or a little bit more, the margins for lenders um, are not as high as they were before, granted. So um, there may be a couple of hundred dollars left in there where we can allot that to your loan, but there's no more the days where we can just go ahead and give away anywhere between, you know, a thousand all the way up to five thousand dollars for your deal. Those days kind of went away when the economy started becoming more inflated and the interest rates started to increase a little bit more. So just based on margins right now, um, that's not a lot of extra money that a lender can just throw at you and say, hey, we're going to get you over the hump. Don't worry. You need two grand. We're going to go ahead and give you a little a lender credit uh, based off of that. But. There are other ways to get that two thousand dollars back in. Like I mentioned, you know, realtor can step in and help out from their commissions. You know, retirement accounts. You have family members who, if you'd be surprised how many family members actually want to help you to acquire and buy a home. You know, you just haven't asked them. You just haven't showed them any documentation. You haven't showed them a contract, letting them know, hey, this is live. This is real. This is active right now, and I need your help. A lot of times family members will step up and say, you know what, I got you. Let me help you out there. So between those avenues and those vehicles, we are always thinking outside of the box to try to get our clients to closing. Um, rarely do we have clients who don't close on. And it, 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 it happens rarely sometimes. But a lot of times as well, that has something to do with what the client did or didn't do. And we found out after the fact. And that kind of threw us all for a loop. So we had to kind of adjust at that point.
Gotcha, gotcha. Now, are there any restrictions on family members with uh, gift funding? Is it any family member, or does it have to be immediate family or, or anything like that? Um, yeah, so find a line between who you can call family and who you can't call family. Um, just but just know on this side. So family, immediate family is really typically what they want to see, whether that's a father, mother, uncle, aunt, grandmother, grandfather, sister, or brother. Um, but then outside of that, if it's a spouse or something like that, someone like a life partner who you live with currently, you guys are not married, but you just live together. We can use that as family as well, because typically um, life partners are family. So, you know, typically they want to see immediate family, but there's a couple of special case circumstances where you can go outside of the immediate family. So, gotcha, gotcha. So, is there uh, any any other things that you just want to uh, tell folks uh, about the housing market in general? Or yeah. Uh, so a couple things, I don't want to be too long, but a couple things right now, um, I'm seeing a lot of influx around um, the three, two, one buy down and the two, one buy down. Um, I don't want to say it's similar to an arm because it's not, um, it, they are fixed products, but just a little bit about how it works. Um, let's just say a three, two, one um, buy down, which means the seller will contribute whatever the cost of your three, two, one buy down. And what that means is if the rates are at 7% right now, generally we're, we're saying 7% um, for three years. So it, you, you'll have a reduction for the first three years in your interest rate. So it will be subtracted. So 7% will be your first, will be your floor rate. So you subtract three from that. So the first year you'll be at 4% as far as what your payment is. The second year you'll be at 5%. The third year you'll be at 6%. And then the fourth year through 30 or until you refi, you'll be at 7%. So you have to qualify for that 7% in order to get this 3 2 one buy -in. But what's remarkable about that program is it allows you to pay what you would pay at 4% for that first year. And what it really does is allows you to float this rate. It's still fixed, but it allows you to float it until the economy kind of stables out and gets a little bit better. So you can float the rate until we can get back up to 7%, which is four years from now. It's a long time to be just hitting 7% where most folks right now are buying at 7%. And so what the seller does is contributes a contribution to your buy down. So let's just say that costs you $10,000. Once you make your payment at 4%, anything that's the difference between four and 7%, the seller is literally paying on your monthly payment. So as you make a payment at 4% for that first year, you're really making a payment for 7%, but the seller is paying the rest to equal to 7%. And that money is held in escrow. And so that's a remarkable program that I don't think a lot of people are taking advantage of. And that's how you can get a lower interest rate for the first couple of years. You know, you don't have to worry about how risky it is. It's not risky at all because you're not paying for it. You know, the seller's paying for it. And so you allow them to pay for the money. You come with the additional money, those vehicles for your closing costs, you know, the vehicle for a down payment assistance at that point. Um, you can couple all that together and that allows you to still pay that lower interest rate for that first three years. So it's going to save you some money over the life of your loan. Well, so so you're saying that somebody that actually can use the down payment assistance program can still use this buy down? Yeah, yeah, you can couple that with buy down as well. Absolutely. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Gotcha, gotcha. So, yeah. yeah, so so that's where we're at right now. Um, they also have an investor product called DSCR loan. And to qualify for that particular program, you just have to own your home already for 12 months. Um, you will put down your 20% on the next property, but um, there's not a way. The only way you offset that mortgage is by having a tenant. So whatever the market rate is for rents in that area, that tenant where once you have a tenant that comes in, will qualify you basically on what the tenant's going to be paying. And so that's going to offset the mortgage for you, allowing you to purchase a lot more properties because now we're not qualifying you based on hey, can you afford this mortgage? It's based off of the market rates for rents or tenants in that area. 
So as long as you have your 20% and your 680 credit score, and this is an investment product, then you won't have to worry about, hey, can I afford this home? Because literally we're going to qualify you on the tenant's uh, rental. So, you know, and that's going to come back on the appraisal as well. The appraiser is going to say, hey, this house or this area typically brings in, you know, let's just say $1,500 a month. Your mortgage on that property could be anywhere between, let's say, $800 and $1,000 a month. And so that's automatically going to offset that mortgage payment. So now it's not going to come up on your debt ratio when we pull credit. And as long as you have the capital, you can go and do this, rinse and repeat this product 5 to 10, 15, 20 times. The only the only problem with that product is it's it's not a renovation type product. It needs to be a, a, a property that's pretty much fully functional, right? Yeah, yeah, it's not it's not a renovation. Um, it has to be turnkey or at least almost turnkey, where you can get in there and get your contractor in there and just kind of you know fix it up on the, the, enough so that it can pass the appraisal at that point and then you know go from there. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Well, you gave us a wealth of uh, information for the day, man. And uh, we, we appreciate you for uh, uh, stopping through. Uh, tell the people how they can find you. Yeah, so right now, um, I'm DMAC at NFM Lending. Um, I'm right on Instagram as well, uh, DMAC the Lender. And then on Facebook, um, Daniel Mac and TikTok as well, DMAC the Lender. So, and that's D M A C K the lender um and so that's how you'll find me on hey man i appreciate you taking the time out to uh you know share your wealth of information man and then hope to get you back on it sometime soon i like yes. to get folks on and also you know to get an update on what they're feeling and what, what's going on in the market later on so we'll be sure yeah. to try to get you back on man and uh, yeah let's do it again let's do it again man i'm, I'm ready i just you know i'm glad that you uh contact me, let me know that, that you wanted to put this together. So I'm down to make this ha this happen. We have updates coming in every every day and every week. So I'm happy to uh, share my information at any given time. I appreciate you and I'll talk to you soon. Yes, sir. Thanks a lot, man. Take care. Yes, sir. Another hump day real estate with Kendall and we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. Yes, sir.